This is Kododori. Let's see what we're doing. Scrolling through the list. We've declared and initialized our list in order to contain all three portions of data. Don't let these words scare you. Declare and initialize just means var names, var ranges, var pictures is what they're talking about. We told it to go get column data from the 100 birds of the world table. In this instance, we said get the name column and it saves it. Which is over here. It saves all that information into our list. All right, so we're going to provide user activity. Oh, good, scrolling. So notice if I hit run right now, we have these arrowy things that do absolutely nothing, which isn't great. So uh, while uh, we're looking for the on event right and left button, right and left button, here I am. And oh, I hate when it does the boxy thing. Let's see if I can get rid of it. I did uh, implement the list scrolling pattern so that as the user clicks the right button or the left button, the program increments or decrements, which means go down the index variable respectfully. All right, what are they asking for? So they're saying if I smack this button or touch this button, I guess uh, we want the pictures to change. Now, how can we do that? Well, we have our names list, for example. So we need to tell it what spot in the names list we want to see. Right? And that's what index is going to be. This is the index of the item we want to see in our names list. So if I go over here to data, notice index starts with zero. And this is a thing with code. That just means the first thing in the list. In code, we start lists or arrays indexed at zero. So I know this is the first item in the list. But if we wanted to get the index, the index here is zero. If the index of this one being the second item is one, index of this is two. Right. So a bit strange, but that's how it works. So what they're asking us to do is, hey, if you hit the right button, uh, let's see the program increments. So right button, it, it changes the image left button. It goes down the index value. They're using a complicated way of saying that. Um, and now I am concerned. Let's see what their suggestion is. Yeah. And we do want to protect this index notice. And the reason we want to or we want a conditional is if the index, a condition statement to check, hey, user, are you trying to go below zero? Because that is going to make an error in our program if they try to go below zero. So I'm going to start with that. Actually, I'm going to throw down my if right away. And I want to protect a program from a, a user trying uh, from possibly causing a error. And so I'm going to say index is greater than zero because otherwise uh wait a minute this is right oh right goes up so i'm gonna drop that down here on our left um and now for the right for the right we want to make sure they don't go off the end of the cliff here so as long as if uh index is less than the length of a list uh we can choose any of our lists i'm gonna go with names dot length and so we want to make sure that this is the case now, as long as it is less than the name of the length of the list, we're going to let the index value actually change. So I'm headed over to variables. I'm going to grab x equals whatever blank. And what I'm going to say is, hey, computer, I want the index to have a new value. Now, what's the index's new value? It's going to be equal to the old value of index minus one. So the computer hits this and says, ah, all right, index has a new value. But what is it? Oh, it's the old value of the index, subtract one. And I just did it again, guys. I'm going to switch to text mode. This should be a plus one because right adds. Yikes. All right. And that being said, though, now for left, I'm going to just, just control C, control V. Left, it's going to be oops, minus one because left is going to go down. Now, I've seen students do this a few different ways. Now, if you can have it just not do anything if they're at the end of the list, right? And that's what would occur here, right? We don't change the index value at all if they're at the end of the list. You could also have it reset to zero, right? So loop back around. And I'm going to add that functionality. Both are technically functionally correct, but I think it's a better user experience to say, all right, if they try to go off the end, just loop back to the beginning. And the same thing down here, I'm going to say, all right, if they try to go below zero, index is going to be equal to the names dot length. But keep in mind, we have to subtract one because dot length, uh, a list of 100 items, when we count the items, would have a 100. 
but indexes for this list is 0 to 99. So dot length will return 100, but we the last index is 99. All right, so that is looking good. And just keep in mind what an else if does, right? If this is true, um, actually, let's start from the top here. When I hit the right button at this point, the, let's see if it's functioning already, run. It is. All right, so when I hit this right button, what happens? The computer says, ah, on the event that the right button is clicked. Well, clicked, boom, so that occurred. Now it says, gotta run this code. If index is less than the length of the list, which it is, I haven't hit the hundredth bird yet, then what has to happen, this here has to run, which I just completely covered up, which would be index gets a new value, its new value is the old value plus one, right? And so if I hit reset here, we start with goldfinch and move to American purple, whatever, whatever, and notice that is the second item in our list. So that is working great. Now, you want to make sure that your update home screen uses the correct list, right? Names, pictures, ranges, and they all use index to update. That's looking great. Let me just double check that this one. There we are. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, on event. Oh, yeah, favorite light right and favorite left. This is going to be very similar to what we just did. I'm going to hammer it out, and then I'll talk about it. All right, so here we are. And again, very similar. Uh, for favorite right, I add one to the favorite index. The reason we have a favorite index is because this is going to be a different list. And only when I add something, when I click the heart thing and add something to our favorites list, is there items in this list. So there's not going to be 100 items. So we need to keep track of how many items are actually in the list uh, with a different index. Whoa. Yeah. And flip through that list using a different index value because there's less items in that list. That being said, uh, it's very similar to what I was saying before. We need to make sure that we change favorite names. Sometimes students, I have students ask, well, why favorite names? Why not favorite pictures? Or why names? Why not ranges dot length? It would work the same, right? Because the data is coming from the same table. There's a hundred items there regardless. So if you do ranges dot length here, yep, you're a hundred percent correct, right? Or you switch off every time and do a different one of those. Hundred percent correct. There's not one way to code correctly. All right, that being said, let's see what else we got here. Random birds, oh, this is gonna be fun. And by fun, I mean frustrating, but neat functionality. Oh, let me, uh, do we have a favorite functionality right now? Uh, no, favorite button doesn't work yet. All right, we'll get there. Find the on event that corresponds to the random button element Implement the code for the following. Implement random access pattern discussed at the end of the last. Using a random number, set the index equal. Okay, so random numbers can be a bit tricky, but we'll get through this together. Yeah, I hit that extra stuff. Uh, we're gonna do, we're setting the index, right? And what is it gonna be equal to now? Index is gonna be equal to a random number right here. Now, what random number? We need, and random number is inclusive, and by that, if I put zero here, the value could be zero, just to be clear. So random number zero to what? Well, we would want it to be zero to the length of our list, right? All of those would be options. So I could put named here. I can, I'm going to put ranges just because that's my other list to prove a point that it doesn't matter which length you use. And then keep in mind, guys, we do need to subtract one still. We don't want to go off the cliff of our list. And we're going to have to call that function update home screen, right? Update home screen, because we need to make sure that once we set the random, the screen actually does refresh or get updated. And what is that? That is a function call that will set off this thing. Remember, set text, set image, set image, and it changes everything up. Great. And we can double check that they have a similar idea that we do, and they do. So we're doing, let's give this a shot. Yeah, looking good. All right. Yep, and that's everything for this portion. Cool, onward.